Welcome back to A Picky Vegan. I'm Erica, and you're watching Daughter Diaries. For tonight's dinner, we are making quesadillas, which have been in my family for as long as I can remember, honestly. We've always eaten quesadillas. So it's actually really great that we can actually make quesadillas that are still vegan. So we're going to be using refried beans from the tacos and taco salads we used or made recently. And the taco meat is the same taco meat we used for those tacos, but this batch in particular was made for nachos recently. So we're going to combine those to make a quesadilla. And let me get the can real quick so you can see what brand it is. So we are using Amy's Vegetarian Organic Refried refi Beans. And even though they say vegetarian, as far as we can see, they are vegan as well. Yep, <laughs> gluten-free, vegan, it's down here. So just keep that in mind, if you see something that's vegetarian, it doesn't always mean it's also vegan, so always check. But if you're vegetarian, most things that are vegan are also vegetarian. It's just not the other way around. Then the taco meat is actually Plant Boss Plant Taco Meatless Crumbles Mild. And we also have tried their Pico de Gallo Meatless Crumbles and that's good as well. And there should be at least a video out already talking about how we made this. If not once, there should be two videos of it, I believe. So for the beans, it doesn't matter if they're room temperature or if they're cold or if they're warm, it's going to get heated up regardless. These were in the fridge and I did heat them up so they would be easier to spread around, but it doesn't quite matter. And I use about half a can of the beans to cover the flour, I think, yeah, the flour tortilla shells. Yep, flour tortilla shells. Now what I'm noticing is these aren't our usual brand, these were, I think, free at a recent grocery store that was opening up. So I actually haven't tried these yet. My dad has and they're still here so they're probably fine. But I also think they're a little smaller than our usual ones so I'm not sure if I would actually be able to use all of these beans. We'll see. You do want your quesadilla a little stuffed but not too much to where it won't close. And actually I think my dad said these were really thin because I remember the last time he made his own quesadilla that was not vegan at all. It made quite the mess on the quesadilla maker. It's too late now though, so we'll just see. You know, want to spit around. It's pretty similar to making a pizza in a sense. You know, you take your sauce, you spread it around pretty evenly, reach the corners. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to use all the beans, and we only have the two tortilla shells left, so we'll still have beans. You can just eat them warm for breakfast, or room temperature, or even cold. I've done that, it's good. Uh, as we're about to put on our quesadilla maker, let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn it on. And then you can't see it because of the camera angle, but it's got two lights here. So one light is red for when it's on and powered, and one is green for when it's ready. So currently the light is on, so it's just heating up. It, it sounds counter uh, counterintuitive, but when the ready light is off, that's when it's actually ready to cook your quesadilla. And then if you can see on the camera, it's kind of shiny. That's because I sprayed it with a little bit of avocado oil. I usually never did this, but my dad said if you want it to be a little crispy, you want to add this, and so far he's been right. So. Just spray a little bit of this. You could also use uh, olive oil or vegetable oil. We have other types of oils in here somewhere. But either way, and then if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's just to help it crisp up a little bit and cook. Make sure it stays down. And it makes, at least ours, and ours is really old. It's probably almost as old as me. <laughs> it makes like a click noise when it's ready. I'm not sure if you'll be able to catch that. And then also you might hear our air fryer in the background. We're having fries with this. So I went ahead and started those. Because there's not a timer for the quesadilla maker, so I don't technically know how long it takes. I just know it's not too long. 
You know, it's not 30 minutes for quesadillas. And then we're gonna take our meat, and this should be enough. Yeah, this is definitely a smaller tortilla size. It'll still be fine. Ours makes six quesadillas. And we are having fries, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. My main concern is, is it really too thin? My dad really stuffed his and had a lot of liquids, so it, it might get a little soggy. But I, I just don't know. We'll have to find out together. And then for the fries, we're just using the frozen Arby fries that we found at our local King Superfoods, which is the same as Kroger's. You won't be able to see that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I just added a little bit of seasoned salt on top. You could also add pepper or regular salt or nothing at all. They're fine as is. I just want to shake them around a little bit. They're on air fry for 375, I believe. Yeah, 375 for 12 minutes. Don't want to be too crispy. We want them to be cooked. We don't, we don't want them to be a little flimsy, I guess. And we're going to spread the meat around. At the same time, you will be spreading the beans around again. I mean, that's fine. But you definitely want to spread your beans first. Just to get a nice base down. And the meat does cover everything. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. A little meat would have been preferable, but we don't have more, so this will be fine. So it's going to be mainly beans, I think. I think the ratio is 60% beans, 40% meat, if that. I think one side might have more meat than the other. So I maybe overdid it on the beans. These are my favorite kind of beans, and it's the only ones I like eating, so it'll be fine. I plan to put salt on top of mine. You could also add diced onions on this. My mom doesn't like onions and I don't care to have them tonight, so I won't. I would just put it on half of them and I'll show you a trick if you want to add some ingredients on half uh, half of the quesadilla and then not the other and then how, you, how do you tell what's the half side. Right. If you heard the clicking, that's not quite it because the light also turns off, but it's getting there. And you just plug it in to turn it on. There's nothing else you do. <laughs> I don't want to block, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna use the fork to spread this out. This cheese sticks to your hands a lot, so anytime I don't have to touch it, it's great. It's fine, you know, you can wash your hands. I washed my hands before this. But I just don't like the feeling of it. <laughs> and it's just the point of the cheese. You know, you eat it, who cares how it feels. It's just me. All right, so that was the clicking noise. It's ready. And I would almost say it's on its own timer in a sense. It, is, it can't really tell when I open and close it, so it's just gonna go, for example. And it's basically thinking, oh, okay, we're cooking now. Because if you're not careful, it will just cook quote unquote, there's nothing to cook, but it'll stay at that temperature and then the light will turn on again, which is how I'll tell when the quesadilla is done. But, you know, let's say I'm, I'm done with this and I said, oh, I'm going to go do something else real quick in the kitchen and just like wash dishes. And then all of a sudden it's almost like it's on a cycle of ready, not ready in a sense. And you, you can put your quesadilla, quesadilla in mid cycle. It's just you won't have that timer that it's on. Again, you don't really see the timer, you just know when the click happens, it's done. It's done heating up and it's done cooking. Actually, preference, this is not all quesadilla makers, just, this is just the one we have. It is very old. I don't know if new quesadillas have a timer or not, <laughs> or if they do things differently. This is just how ours work. Alright, and I'm probably going to leave the cheese at that because, surprise, surprise, I'm not a big cheese person. I don't like cheesy quesadillas <laughs> at all. And that's actually one of the main points of quesadillas is the cheese.
cheesiness of it, but I'm not a fan of it, so I add this amount of cheese, if not a little less, because it's vegan cheese, and where it is, it'll melt in that capacity. It doesn't really meld together and spread out like regular cheese does. So because of that, I added a bit more than I usually would. But if you like cheesy quesadillas, then add as much cheese to your heart is content. But I do not. I would, with real cheese, I would add less. Girl back cooking. It's actually probably on the next cycle again. it on top, pat it down a little bit. And if you wanted to, if you, if you didn't overstuff it, yeah, see the light's on now. <laughs> Next cycle, and it's still, I can put it in, but yeah. Um, just gonna squish down a little bit. I forgot what I was saying completely. Uh, now the trick I was gonna show you for telling, you know, which half is half, or which side is the side with the onions, for example, what I did last time, which was not on camera, I took my nail, which they're very short right now, but you, or you could even take a fork technically, and just very lightly poke the dough to leave an indent. So let's say my onions were right across here. So I would take my nail and poke it across. Not to where it pokes a hole through the dough, you don't want that, but just to where you can see it. And then when you have your line, on the side with the onions, or the side you want to mark, add a few more. It doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be in a row, but just kind of all over. And it will show up when it cooks. And again, don't poke a hole through it. But this is just so you would know that, oh, this is the side that has the onions on it, or does not have the onions on it. And I don't think it shows up on camera. Sorry. And like I said, you could take your fork, and again, just lightly lightly pressed down. You just want to indent it a little bit. You don't really want any holes or anything. And this is pretty much useless because <laughs> it's the same, but that's just so you know how to mark it. And we're going to peel it up a little bit and find the bottom side. And you do want to try and match up the corners, but I think this one is slightly bigger than the other one. So what I would do is I would flip it. And our, our fries are done, and the quesadilla isn't. Poor timing on my part. Yeah, I can't flip this, it's fine. Place it in the center. Push down. There we go. It won't close all the way because now it's full of something, which is normal. But I do like to press down on it a little bit just to really sandwich it together. Let's take a look at our fries. <laughs> fries look pretty good. They look really undone on camera. They look so raw. I promise you they're not. They're much browner in person. And we're talking about the air fryer because even though the air fryer is technically off now, it's still really warm in that component and it will cook your fries or anything else that's in there and it will burn them. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So that's done. I'm going to do like a little bit of cleanup. I forgot to mention this is the Follow Your Heart Finely Shredded Cheddar Cheese. Toy free, vegan, lactose free, and it does melt pretty well. It's a little temperamental about when it wants to melt, but it does melt, which is a lot more I can say for this cheese than other ones. Do you hear the sizzling? That's either the beans spilling out or the cheese, or both. 
Let's take a peek, shall we? I'm gonna put this up. Okay. Oh, look like, looks like neither. Nothing seems to be spilling out. That's fine. And I'm gonna pick the camera up just a little bit so you can see. It's starting to make an indent, but it needs to be crispier, so. And I don't think, yeah, you, you can't see the indents I've made with my nail and fork, it's fine. But it's on this side. <laughs> And so we use taco meat, but you could also use chicken, you can use beef. For the beef ones, we've actually added tomato sauce instead of beans, and that's really good. <laughs> Still with cheese. And for chicken, we just do the same thing here, but instead of taco meat, we use chicken. There's a lot of different things you could add to it. And our technically our taco meat has jalapenos in it, so that's in there. But there's, there's quite a few few different things you can add for toppings and sauces and, and meats. Well, I say meats, vegan meats, at least for our channel. <laughs> Oh, see, now it's spilling out, but it's still not crispy enough. So the two in the back here, those are pretty good. You want this kind of texture kind of across the whole thing. So we're gonna put it back down. And then once these two are done, I'm actually gonna take a spatula and rotate it, which is a little hard to do but it's worth it if you want them all to be crispy now about the fact that everything's spilling out I have no solution for this uh, except for maybe don't stuff it as much but then where's the fun in that so you may want to eat this with a fork if you've overstuffed yours I'm just pressing down on it a little bit to help it get crispy. And I'm using the spatula because I'm not sure about every other quesadilla maker that's out there, but this also gets hot. So I just want to use this every so often. And you might be wondering, isn't that just pushing everything out that was an inside? Yes, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> All right, let's see. There we go. Oh, oh, it's worse. Oh, it's so much worse. Okay, I've definitely overstuffed it. I'm not used to using the size of tortilla shells. Um, it's it's gonna be fun trying to turn this. All right, so. Oh gosh. I blame Dad. <laughs> 
And granted, these beads are free for a store opening. So you can't complain too much. But I'm trying to push the stuffing back in a little bit. <laughs> Uh, it's not going to matter. It's going to squish out again. But I just need to be able to see the bottom tortilla shell, which is right here. And be careful, you can poke a hole through the tortilla shell, so be gentle. And I want to kind of get on the ridge right here. And then you also make sure you, you actually have the bottom tortilla shell. You're not just putting your spatula in between the layers. That's really bad. I want to kind of separate it right here. You're gonna take it, lift up, and turn. And I'm gonna to touch it, it is hot, so please be careful. And take it off, and then once again, go under. Make sure you actually have the underside. I do. And whatever is the most cooked side, which is these two, put it towards the front, because they don't really need to cook more. It's fine if they do, but you wanna make sure every other piece gets a chance. Now I'm actually going to line up the grid marks with the grid marks on the actual quesadilla maker. And it'll just kind of slide into place. And something else you can do too with anything that's fallen out, you can just put it on top. There's no harm in that. It's already on top of the lid, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm just trying to push it back in if I can. It will squeeze out and you will eat it with a fork because it still tastes good. All right. And then, oh, see, I knew it. I knew there was a piece. There we go. Now I'm going to use the handle and push down a little bit. And then at this point, it's just about eyeballing it. Everything inside is already cooked. We've never put in raw meat before. You know, the only thing that was raw before was the cheese, which at that point is just cold. So I'm not listening to the clicks anymore or for the ready button over there. It's not even a button, it's just a light. Um, I'm just eyeballing it to see how crispy do I want it. And then technically, if you have a bigger tortilla shell, it will get these little rings on it to kind of seal it up, the edges. This is actually too small, I think, for that. So it's purely just on the texture on top. And I now, once again, you can tell I've never timed this before because the fries have been done for a couple minutes now. To think I was concerned that the fries, or uh, the quesadilla, would finish before the fries, which technically wouldn't have been a bad thing. <laughs> Not really. Uh, but instead, I have the opposite problem. The fries are done, but you can't really heat up. Not really. They'll just get either crispier, or they might get softer. <laughs> so, but the quesadillas, you can heat up. You can put in the microwave, which is alright, it does heat it up, but then they get really soft, which is kind of subpar. I don't really like super soft wilty quesadillas, but now that we have an air fryer, you just put it in the air fryer and it cooks it like new, straight out of the quesadilla maker. It's just as crispy, just as firm, and it's amazing. It's the only way I, re I will reheat my quesadillas now. Forget the microwave. <laughs>
All right, let's see. Okay, it's pretty decent. There's one on this side that's not quite crisp. Notice though it's not sizzling as as much, so it's it's getting pretty close to done. You can't necessarily baste it on the sizzles, but <laughs> my brothers here we're just laughing at each other, <laughs> essentially. Oh, uh, no! For for me anyway, it is about looking at it, not the sound it makes. The sound just means either everything that's spilled out is already cooked, <laughs> so it's no longer sizzling, or I don't know what. However, it's probably done. It's fine if that one isn't as crispy. I'm just gonna put salsa on top anyway. Yeah. If you can hear that, it's firm. And this is not something you have to check for either. I was just showing how, even though it's not, it doesn't look that crispy, it is because it doesn't bend or anything. And um, once again, oh yeah, yeah, wait, wait, hang on. I want you to look at this right here. It's squished flat. That's the ring you would get if there was a tortilla shell right there. <laughs> Instead, it is the beans. <laughs> and that'll come right up. And it will still be delicious. All right, let's go ahead and take this out. Sorry for moving the camera so much. The tripod only goes so high. But I want you I want you to see what the top looks like. Once again, you're going to make sure you have the bottom tortilla shell. Even though it is cooked, there is still a chance you will just go in between the layers. I'm just gonna go all the way around. And you're gonna take your plate, which is one of our biggest plates here, and just scooch it off the side. Okay, uh, something I should have said before doing that is unplug your quesadilla maker. It's fine technically to do it the way I did it. It doesn't matter too much, but you do want to make sure you unplug it because there's no off button or anything. It, it turns on and off when it's plugged in. Then get these pieces because this is the good stuff. Leave that piece. It's, oh no! Ha! There we go. All right. <laughs> I completely missed it. Anyway, and then we're going to take our. Oh, hang on. No, no. Don't backseat film. Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. I was just gonna turn the camera for you. That's it. I appreciate the thought, but no. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take our pizza cutter here and, and be careful the plate is hot. Oh, that's not straight at all. as a member of the audience <laughs> if, you had, if you had a different if you had a different quesadilla maker here where it was more where the lid was more uniform would you still have to turn the quesadilla to get it cooked uniform all the way around i would think not if it maybe if the lid just uh, went flat yeah if it laid flat yeah instead of at the hinge at the back yeah i would think not but we haven't had one this is the only quesadilla maker we've had yeah <laughs> so so for anyone like us that has a quesadilla maker like this. That's why you rotate is because it's on a hinge. And it's going to be more closed at the back than at the front. That's yeah. why the ones at the back get crisper. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, it closes just fine when it's empty, which well, yeah. makes sense. Yep. Like you said, as a member of the audience instead of member of the family. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you what though, viewers, I did not know if you cooked a quesadilla in the in the air fryer, it actually makes it like new and it keeps it crisp. Because I okay, I have to admit, I don't actually okay. I don't like reheating quesadillas. I don't 
particularly like brand new ones either. I'm just not a big fan of the mushy texture, but something I hated as a kid, really hated as a kid, was reheating quesadillas, where they were all soft and wilty. It, bleh, I just, I didn't like the texture. And so hearing that you can, by using an air fryer, get it back to brand new and keep it, keep it all crisp is quite delightful. Yeah, I mean, I imagine you could put it in the oven that seems a little extra yeah, to that's me. Yeah, that's a little overkill. You know, get a pan out, put your foil on it, put it in the oven, and see how long it would take. I imagine 400 at five minutes, maybe, which maybe. is what I do for the air fryer. Yeah. But still, I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. It seems overkill almost. Mm hmm But, and I just want to say, do be careful when you're cutting. I'm sure I made some of you nervous when I was cutting my fingers right here. Yeah. But you have to be... You have to make sure you're holding onto the plate because otherwise the plate will slip. But then also, when you're cutting the quesadilla, they will also stick to each other and move. Yeah. So it's a balancing act of, you know, holding the quesadilla, but then also the plate and then trying to cut. So just go slow, be gentle, just so you still cut through. What do they say? Like when you're cutting, when you're cutting like vegetables and stuff to paw it like this, that way if you only... Yeah, I can't do that with a plate. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, maybe if you got your other finger on the bottom and then, like, eh, squished together. This isn't a cooking technique <laughs> yeah. video or channel. <laughs> Just be safe, watch what you're doing, and go slow. Yeah, be mindful. Yeah, you can always just go over the cut multiple times. You can't, like, fix your finger, though, if you end up... Yeah, <laughs> slicing a little bit of skin off. Or... Yeah. Yeah. So just be very, very careful. If you're left-handed like I am, you, you just, you learn to accept going over a cut over and over and over again to actually get it right. Yeah. But either way, that is our quesadillas. I'm going to add salsa on top of mine. Our fries have been done for how long at this point? Probably six or seven minutes. No, I think it's more like... <laughs> ten, ten or fifteen. Ten or fifteen. <laughs> either way, how dare... Warmish. Okay. I thought you were going to eat one. It's no, not part of your dinner. I want one, but no. <laughs> I already had some earlier as a snack off camera, so. Well before recording had even begun. Yeah. Either way, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let us know what you put on top of your quesadillas and what kind do you make. Do Tell you make... Even what kind of quesadilla maker you even have. Yeah. If it's a uniform <laughs> one or if it's hinged at the back like ours is. Yeah, do you have a new case to you maker? Is it different? Is it the same technology after 15 years or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> Please let us know. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ah, uh, yes. See, Mom usually does that. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't do it at all. <laughs> so. And if you do subscribe, please consider hitting a little notification bell. That way you're notified every time a picky vegan uploads. Gold star. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.